Hey everyone, my name is Calvin Ang. I'm the chef and owner of Bonnie's, and today I'm gonna show you how to make a fried milk sundae topped with Ovaltine hot fudge. The first thing we wanna do is make our fried milk custardy pudding situation just because we want it to have time to set. We want at least three hours in the fridge or overnight ideally. And we're just gonna throw in our whole milk and our sugar. Fried milk is basically just milk that has been set into like a super custardy situation and has been battered and deep fried. It's typically served during like Cantonese banquets with the, uh, it's for during a savory dish, savory course. Everyone always wonders how you fry milk, but you're really just setting it into like a pudding that's a little loose, but not too set. That's why we have to heat it up to like exact temperatures so it's not too thick when we fry it because at the end of the day, when you bite into it, you still want it to be oozy and gooey and just hot and delicious. So while that's heating up, we want to blend our malt powder. And for malt powder, there's two types of malt powder. So we wanna make sure we get the one that's made for flavoring and not the one for baking. And it basically just has whey powder and sugar as well. Our cornstarch and our water, I like to blend it just to make sure it's super smooth and no lumps, just to make it a much more luscious and have a better mouthfeel when we're eating it. I mean, malt is one of my favorite ingredients because like Whoppers are like one of my favorite candies of all time. And even the Ovaltine hot fudge that we're making is a malted chocolate drink. So sugar is basically all dissolved now. Our malt powder is super smooth. You could crank up the heat a little bit and slowly just twist that in as well to incorporate it. Remember, this mixture in the blender has cornstarch, so it will start to thicken, which is what we want. So the fried milk that I'm doing here is different from the one a growing up at like Chinese banquet dinners is because we're adding malt. Like I said before, it was just a milk custard that was set or they use coconut milk. But the idea is all the same. You could crank up the heat a little bit now, but you have to pay attention to it because it, this will thicken very quickly. And you basically want to heat this up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit because I found that that was the perfect temperature to allow the pudding to thicken without being too thick. So it's super important to make sure you take that temp. I think about 160 to 170 is kind of ideal. So we're good. We cut that now. So it still looks super runny, but once we cool that and chill it off, it'll set into a super nice pudding that we could eventually cut into cubes and deep fry. Next, we want to pour that into a sheet tray. If you have a silt pad, great. If you don't, parchment will also work but you want to pass this through a fine mesh strainer or a chinois, try to remove as much lumps as possible. I know we already blended it, but there will be lumps in this as well. And this will kind of remove as much as possible. So you can see it's super smooth. Use this rubber spat, kind of push it all through. But as you can see, it went through pretty well, but we did catch a couple things, so that's why it's super important. Just wiggle it around, a little tappity tap. Cool, now just basically just set this in the fridge at least three hours overnight, ideally, just so it's much easier to work with. While the milk custard is setting, we're gonna make the Ovaltine hot fudge now. So today, the hot fudge that I'm making is a super basic fudge recipe. I basically remove a lot of the chocolate quantities and substitute that with Ovaltine powder. Turn the heat up, about medium heat, and we're gonna add in heavy cream, corn syrup, and water first. Add our light brown sugar, malt powder, and the Ovaltine. So when I was designing this menu, I knew I wanted to incorporate Ovaltine in some way. Ovaltine has just been such a big part of my childhood and part of just Chinese and Cantonese culture in general. It's not even a Chinese product. Ovaltine was actually born in Switzerland and became super popular in England and eventually found its way to Hong Kong through the British. And it's basically just a super tasty, delicious, powdered, malted chocolate beverage. While everything in the pot is dissolving, you could chop up your chocolate and get that ready. You shave your chocolate bar into manageable pieces, and you want to crank this up a little bit and add in all your chocolate and whisk till it's all melted and smooth. This is another step where we have to use a thermometer to temp it because it's super important that enough water has evaporated from the mixture so that way it'll have the right consistency. So we want to heat this to 220 degrees, so which is past the boiling point. See, as you can see, it's starting to bubble up now. A lot of the water is evaporating, which is exactly what we want to help it all melt. Cool, so once it hits 220, we cut the heat, move it off the heat. We could add in our butter and let, allow that to emulsify in. 
Let's constantly whisk it in. Our salt and our vanilla. Again, this is something you could, once it's cool, you could store it in the fridge in a container and kind of just warm it up as needed. It'll last at least a week. Once all the butter is um, emulsified in, it's pretty much good to go. And again, we're gonna strain this through a fine mesh strainer or a chinois as well, just to remove as many lumps as possible, make this super, super smooth. So next, we're gonna check on our milk custard that has been setting for about three hours now. I mean, if you could tell it's not like jiggly anymore or super loose, it's super all set, kind of like jello. After this gets fried and heated through, it's gonna be ooey and gooey just because there's, there is some starch in, in this pudding, basically. In the meantime, we could also get our oil heating up. You wanna get about two quarts going, just bring it up to 350 while you work on the cubes and getting those ready. So you just wanna divide these up into whatever desired shape, size you want. And I'm just gonna go for about half inch cubes just for the sundae. So it heats through a lot quicker. Basically now we're just gonna make a super light, thin, airy, crispy batter. So first we're just gonna add in AP flour, cornstarch, salt, baking powder. Whisk that up well, make sure it's all incorporated. Whisk in our cold water. Whisk that up super well, get rid of all the lumps. Hit it with some oil, smooth that out a little bit. Battering these is a little messy, a little annoying, especially when there's that many, but it's all worth it. So after we make our wet batter, all we wanna do is just get a bowl of flour. So we're basically gonna take the cubes, toss in the dry dredge, which is just straight AP flour, go into the wet, and then go into the 350 oil. Try to keep one hand dry, one hand wet so you're not forming crazy clumps on your fingers. For the first fry, we're not really looking for color. We're just looking for the crust to set. And then on the second fry is when we're gonna focus more on color. But if they all clump up, it's not a big deal. Once it cools, we could pull them apart. While those are cooling, you can kind of work on your toppings that you want to use today. For your nuts, you could toast them if you'd like. These are already toasted, but I'm definitely going to chop them up a bit and just do a peanut and walnut combo and just have them all. Ideal ice cream sundae as a kid would probably be just straight hot fudge, a basic vanilla ice cream, like the shittier the ice cream, the probably the better type thing, and just doused in sprinkles. Like, no nuts. I did not fuck with nuts. But these days, I appreciate the little crunch and flavor that it brings. So while your toppings are aside, you could pull your ice cream ahead of time as well, just to make sure that's like tempered and scoopable and nice. And if you made your hot fudge way ahead of time, you could just heat that up easily in the microwave. So once your oil is back up to 350, you can drop the cubes in for the second fry, and then make sure you have everything else ready, just because we're just gonna start assembling right after and all comes together very quickly. And since these are small, I'm not gonna leave it in too long, just because they're definitely heated through at this point. We can start assembling now. So grab your ice cream of choice, then we can just start building it. These are hot, so you have to move kind of fast, otherwise it's all gonna melt. And then I also like to douse it with even more malt powder at the end as well. Hit it with some whipped cream. I'll just get those nuts on there that we chopped earlier. And finish it off with the cherry, and we're good to go. Fried milk sundae. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the contrast of hot and cold is probably like one of my favorites. Super gooey, super malty. The Ovaltine really comes through as well. Delicious. For the recipe, click below and hit me up at Bonnie's.